Today we are going to review the profit maximizing behavior for individual firms in the resource market when that resource market is perfectly competitive. We are looking specifically at the resource market for labor that is perfectly competitive. So let's start by describing the perfectly competitive labor market. Well, first of all, there would be many firms demanding a specific type of labor. So many firms would be competing with each other for the specific type of labor. Secondly, there are many workers. There are many workers with an identical skill set, so the supply of workers is relatively abundant. Now what we'll see is when these two conditions are present, then individual firms and in fact individual workers are what are called wage takers, which means they don't have any individual control over the price that's going to be paid to workers or the price of labor that's going to be received by workers, which is, is in fact their wage. So let's start over here on the left by looking at the industry for the resource market when that market is perfectly competitive. Well, let's start with the supply curve. Now, what we want to understand here is that when we're working with product markets, it is the businesses or the firms that are the suppliers of goods and services out there for consumers to purchase. Here we're looking at the resource market for labor. So it is in fact not businesses that are suppliers, but it is households who supply their labor out on the resource market. Now the reason why there's a positive slope for the supply curve is because, think of it this way, if businesses want to hire a single worker, that first worker that they're going to hire, that person may be unemployed. And so they will be very easy to pull off the unemployment rolls and into employment. And so the firm would not have to pay a relatively high wage. They would pay a relatively low wage for that first worker. Now, as they continue to hire additional workers, so as we move along the x-axis, which represents the quantity of workers being hired, then the firms need to make this move toward employment more and more attractive. Eventually, the firm is trying to attract workers that are not unemployed, that are in fact in employed in some other industry and they're already earning a wage. And so for those workers, let's call those workers workers 10, the firms would have to offer a relatively high wage to attract them away from whatever they're currently doing and into this labor market. So I'll erase this for simplification. The next thing that we want to plot is these industries demand curve for labor in the perfectly competitive market. Now the industry demand curve has a negative slope. Again, in product markets, it's households, consumers that are the demanders of goods and services. This is not the product market, this is the resource market, and it is businesses, firms, that demand labor out on the resource market. So the demand curve represents business behavior in the resource market. Now this curve also has a negative, or this curve I should say has a negative slope. The reason is because of something that is abbreviated MRP, or the marginal revenue product. Each worker's value from the point of view of the firm uh, is based upon the additional revenue that that worker provides the firm. Now because of something called diminishing marginal returns, uh, as we employ more and more workers, we see that the additional revenue that each worker adds to the firm's total revenue becomes less and less because the workers are less productive than the previous worker. So for example, if we hire nobody, production is totally stopped and there's no revenue. If we hire one worker, well that worker may be extremely productive. And so that worker is adding a lot to the firm's total revenue and therefore the firm is willing to pay them a lot to match the revenue that they're providing the firm. As we hire additional workers, the workplace may start to get a little crowded, there's not enough capital to justify the number of laborers that are around, and eventually you get to a point where there are so many workers that the, say, manufacturing plant is packed wall to wall like sardines with workers to the point where production completely stops. So obviously those last workers would be adding very little, they'd actually be subtracting to the terms total revenue, so the firm wouldn't want to pay them anything at all. So if we follow those extremes, we'll understand why workers, as we add additional workers, we find that each worker's 
marginal revenue, that is the amount that they add to the firm's total, becomes less and less because of diminishing marginal returns. So because of that, firms rightly, as they represent themselves on the demand curve here, are willing to pay less and less for that particular worker. Now, where the demand and supply curves meet, that is the market or industry equilibrium point, and this would provide us with the market wage. Let's call it wage one, W1. Now, this is the industry produced market wage for this particular skill set and this particular market, which is perfectly competitive, which we've defined as many firms and many workers. Now, what we're going to do is travel over here to the right, and we're going to move from the industry to the firm. We characterize the perfectly competitive resource market as being one in which the firms and the employees are wage takers. So because of that, we are going to take this wage, wage one, which is the industry produced equilibrium wage, carry it over here, we'll label it, label it again wage one, and we are going to see that in fact the supply curve that the firm faces is going to be perfectly elastic because uh, the firm is facing a supply of labor that must be paid this equilibrium wage price. That is the market produced wage price. Uh, anything less that this firm would offer, well, nobody would work here because there's plenty of job opportunities elsewhere. There are many firms willing to pay the equilibrium wage. Anything above the equilibrium wage would be uh, a net loss for the company, and in fact, it would be an unsustainable wage to pay the workers because their costs would be greater than any every other uh, competing firm in the industry, and the firm would eventually go out of business. And so what we'll see is that all workers will be paid exactly this wage. Now, not only is that the supply curve, but that is something that is referred to as the marginal resource cost, or the MRC. This is the additional cost that the firm incurs by hiring an additional unit of labor. And that is the wage rate. So if it's $10 per hour, if that's W1, then the marginal resource cost is $10 for every single worker you hire on an hourly basis. Now, the demand curve that the, face, that the, that the firm faces is uh, negatively sloped, just as it is in the industry. And so we add in a negatively sloped demand curve. Now, we said that the demand curve is negatively sloped because demand is derived from the marginal revenue product, which is the change in total revenue that each additional worker uh, adds to the firm. And so for the firm, the equilibrium, or in fact what we should call the profit maximizing point, will be the point at which marginal revenue product is equal to marginal resource cost. Again, remember, the marginal resource cost, that's the wage we have to pay the additional worker. That's adding to the firm's total cost. The marginal revenue product is the revenue that this particular worker is responsible for providing the firm. And so a firm would never hire a laborer who adds more to the marginal resource cost, or to the total cost, I should say, than the, than the worker adds to the total revenue. That would be a loss for the, uh, for the firm. So we see that the profit maximizing rule of MRP equals MRC is represented by this point on the firm's graph. This is the point at which marginal re revenue product is equal to the marginal resource cost. So the firm is able to capitalize on all the profit potential of these first workers because this is the point, or this is the area I should say, where marginal revenue product exceeds the marginal resource cost. So the firm is in fact uh, winning or making a small profit on uh, these first workers because the workers are extremely productive, but we don't need to pay them in according to their productivity. We just pay them the marginal resource cost. So this is a quick review of profit maximizing behavior for the firm and a perfectly competitive labor or resource market.